Hello, my friends. My name is Darren Gertis, and I have three big stories for today. Please do not miss the last story because I want to pay tribute to someone who deserves it far beyond anything I can even articulate. First here, Anton Garashenko is showing this. Russian propagandists want to build Europe for everything. Russia has done for it. Russia's done for it. Russia took over and essentially enslaved large swaths of it, starting with World War I and everything that we have invested in the Baltic countries. Really? <laughs> okay, that's quite a perverse way of looking at the world. I think the West should bill Russia for what they have had to do to counter Russia's pernicious influence in the world. The OSCE Parliamentary Assembly recognized Russia's actions as genocide against the people of Ukraine. This just came out, uh, and I think it's really important here. Here's the actual article. The Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe identified the decolonization of Russia. I like the language, the decolonization, because that's what Russia has been trying to do, is colonize Ukraine. And then they go to Africa and say, we never, we never colonized. No, you colonize your neighbors. That's that's, that's what's happening here. As a necessary precondition for establishing enduring peace in Ukraine, calling for the support of the peace formula and Crimean platform, and urging member states to establish a special tribunal to hold Russia accountable for its atrocities in Ukraine. The Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe Parliamentary Assembly adopted a resolution recognizing the actions of the Russian military, political leadership, and armed forces during the full-scale invasion as genocide. Russia's war against Ukraine constitutes genocide based on the United Nations definition and evidence of mass civilian murders, systematic torture, deportations with up to 19,000 Ukrainian children forcibly deported to Russia. Get that number in your head. There's tens of thousands of Ukrainian children forcibly deported to Russia. And we know, like, I've seen higher estimates than that even yet. And if there was just one child forcibly deported, that would be enough to be like, this is a problem we need to address. 19,000, I can't even imagine the scale of the heartache that they've caused just on that one thing alone, let alone all the other horrors of the war. Key points from the 70 clauses of the OSCE E PA resolution, a call for 53 OSCE participating countries to support the deoccupation of Crimea and all occupied territories of Ukraine through peace formula and the Crimean platform. A call for OSCE states to establish a special tribunal to hold Russian, the Russian Federation accountable for crimes committed during the aggressive war against Ukraine. OSCE countries are invited to quickly launch a mechanism for using frozen Russian assets to benefit Ukraine. That makes me a little nervous. I, using the interest is a little bit better than trying to seize it, but I, I understand what they're what they're after. I just don't want them to destroy their banking system in the process. The 2024 presidential elections in Russia should be recognized as rigged. Well, they were rigged, um, and and Putin spent two billion dollars on a rigged election. It's it's just stunning and undermining the legitimacy of the entire Russian electoral system to show support for the creation of an international coalition for the return of Ukrainian children. Like this should be the easiest no brainer kind of part of this, uh, of anything here and a call to ban the import of Russian liquefied gas into the European union, re-export and transit through EU ports. So that's what happened here with the OSCE. Now that is coupled with like, and by the way, look at this. 554 children died in Ukraine due to Russian aggression as of today, June 30th. More than 14,000 or what, 1,419 kids were injured due to Russian aggression since the war began. Like, that's just children. Okay. Let's go to the next one. ICC arrest warrants deal a fatal blow to the demand that Ukraine accepts Russian occupation in exchange for peace. So I talked about the ICC warrants and then I saw this article and I thought, yes, that's right. This is brilliant. So that backs Putin up from just saying we're going to we'll sue for peace as things are right now. No, 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 no. You're internationally wanted, not just you, but your, your defense minister, your air force guy, your uh, admiral over for the Black Sea Fleet. Just listen to this. The International Criminal Court arrest warrants against Russian military leaders Sergei Shoigu and Gerasimov are unlikely to result in their trial. We know that, okay? But as a former de uh, Ukrainian Deputy Minister of Justice has pointed out, such warrants will make it harder for populist politicians to put pressure on Ukraine to accept Russia's territorial demands in supposed exchange for peace. 
that's freaking brilliant. Like I, 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 hadn't, I hadn't even thought about the political implications of that in this regard, but that's exactly right. This is particularly true as the warrant coincides with a damning European Court of Human Rights judgment finding multiple and systematic violations in occupied Crimea. Over the past three days, I talked about both of these events. More importantly, ICC considers uh, the Russian deliberate attacks on Ukrainian energy infrastructure constitute both a war crime and a crime against humanity. On 5 March 2022, the ICC trial chamber issued arrest warrants against the commander of the Long Range Aviation of the Aerospace Force and the Sokolov, the commander of the Black Sea Fleet, and that was after uh, the one for the uh, for Putin and the woman in charge of all the kidnapping of children, uh, deportation of them or removal of them or whatever it is that they wanted to call it. The political importance of such warrants is hard to even explain. Like this changes everything uh, in the way that they're going to be able to negotiate. Russia constantly claims that allegations of war crime, etc. are just Ukrainian propaganda, but you can't really get away with that when it's the International Criminal Court and other major bodies that are involved in doing this. The ICC conclusions are much greater are a much greater obstacle for those populist politicians who want to pressure Ukraine into peace negotiations, uh, despite Russian insistence that these are essentially on on Russia's terms and with Russia occupying huge parts of Ukrainian territory. Same is true about the ECHR judgment in the in, uh, interstate case of Ukraine versus Russia. While ECHR ex examined only cases in occupied Crimea, and like that's what that was about, it was just about Crimea from 2014 forward, the violations of rights enshrined in the European Convention and of international law have been seen wherever Russia seized control. Yeah, they were, they were doing terrible stuff anywhere that they occupied. Uh, like the ICC warrants, the ECHR judgment leaves no scope for justifying Russia's occupation of any Ukrainian territory. So this is actually actually a brilliant political move that'll have ramifications moving forward. Okay, last big story. I, I don't even know how to uh, approach this. This is Pete the Medic. Uh, we, we've talked about Pete the Medic. We've uh, He's been uh, streamed on my channel with Greg Cher Terry, and I've gotten to talk to him personally. He's just been like, he... He's from South Africa and Britain. He's a medic and he came to help the people of Ukraine and he was just killed um, recently and, and I want to pay tribute to him and I, I don't know that I can even do it justice. I don't have the words. So we know him in association with Project Constantine and Project Constantine was named for Constantine who was killed uh, on the front lines and Pete has been championing the cause here. Uh, and Project Constantine has re relayed this message. It's with the heaviest of hearts that we announce the passing of Pete, our beloved director and founder. There are no words that can do Pete's life justice, no words or phrases that could ever encapsulate how much he meant to all of us. Pete's unwavering dedication, endless compassion, relentless commitment to Ukraine and her people have left an everlasting impact on the countless lives that he touched. Remember, he was a medic. On top of that, beyond saving people, he, he brought a lot of attention to the cause. His heroism knew no bounds. He was actively involved in saving more than 200 wounded Ukrainian soldiers, and we just won't know how many total. Evacuating civilians from the most dangerous frontline cities, as well as bringing humanitarian aid to people in those towns and cities. Pete's bravery and selflessness in the face of danger were nothing short of extraordinary, and his actions will be forever etched in our hearts. Pete was more than a leader. He was a beacon of hope, a true hero, and a friend to all. His wisdom, compassion, and faith in God inspired us every day. His death feels like the worst nightmare, the kind of nightmare where you wish you could just wake up, but then we wake up and realize that it wasn't just a nightmare. We will honor Pete's memory by continuing the work that he was so passionate about, carrying forward his legacy of courage and kindness, of fighting for what's right, of speaking up in the face of injustice. Rest in peace, Peter. We know that our Heavenly Father has welcomed you into his arms. Your heroism and your contributions will never be forgotten, and we will make sure that it was not in vain. I got the chance to talk to Pete on with Greg Terry uh, not too long ago, and uh, actually a few times since then. And and the first thing that I said was like, Man, "I'm I'm here with greatness. I'm so glad to be able to meet you because like 
Like he's a legit hero doing what he's doing as a medic on the front line. And he's like, no, 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 you don't understand. You guys have done so much. We haven't done crap compared to what you've done. Like he was, uh, you know, thanking Greg and I for our fundraising efforts, but compared to what he has done, it's nothing. And he was just so kind, so humble, so gracious. And uh, we just want to remember Pete the medic. And as I think about Pete, the thing that comes to my mind is Edmund Burks saying the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. Pete stepped up. He's a good man. Thank you for your time. Thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.